which is nitrates second one is phosphates which is PO4 so what does these nutrients does if it's excessively available in your reef tank it's gonna grow your nuisance algae which is the hair algae or the green algae or any kind of algae growing in your reef rocks okay you don't want that to happen because your reef rocks is for your corals to grow and I'm gonna tell you three best ways to reduce your nutrients first method is using your filter sauce what is filter sauce filter sauce is this is the filter sauce okay this is nylon uh, filter sock which is going to trap all the free floating detritus in your reef tank okay but capturing it doesn't have chance to decompose in your reef tank or in some by then you already removed it i recommend you removing uh, this twice a week or three times a week so by then replace the new one you have the chance to get rid of them earlier before it gets decomposed in your some tank so the filter saw uh traps all the free floating nitritus and organics floating on your reef tank and captures like this okay this is the outlet coming out from the uh, reef tank to the filter socks here so i have uh, lots of filter socks here i change it and then i swept the new one and then the old one here uh, is getting uh, clogged i'm gonna be washing it okay second method Second method is using your schema. What is schema? Schema is this. Okay. This is the schema. My schema is the Reef Octopus uh, 3000 High NT internal schema. Okay, I place it inside my sum. And uh, what it does? It does. What I mean it does is that it's going to absorb all the uh, diluted organics or decomposed organics in your reef tank just gonna take it out like this bubbles forming on top and it's gonna get overflow inside this top okay this is kind of a wet skimming wet skimming is gonna derive more water out of the tank well dry skimming is gonna get less water but more gunky okay it's gonna get smelly by the time okay I recommend you to do both but wet skimming is much more effective where you remove small organics okay instead of just dry skimming it's gonna take um, much more effort for the schema a wet skim mate uh, look like this okay this is how the wet skim mate look like it's uh, diluted but uh, tea brown tea green color okay see this this is how it looks like a wet skim mate okay this is four days of skim it here opening. I recommend you to uh, clean the skimmer cup twice a week so it has a chance to form uh, more formal uh, bubbles. So now you see it's full so it doesn't form uh, proper bubbles anymore. So if you clean it up, it's gonna give you a nice foaming on top. And then it's gonna skim more uh, organics out of your tank. Skimmers comes in a various, various, uh, various forms and uh, various uh, types and various capacity. Okay, uh, depends on your tank size. Purchase depends on your tank size. So it does a good job for you. Instead, you don't have to think and 
scratch your head then after that. So this one does a great job for me. My nitrate phosphate stays below the level. My nitrate is staying around below 5 ppm. My phosphate is about 0, 0.00 somewhere very low. Okay. So I use a NIOS and a Salifert test kit. This is what I use and I test. It's convenient for me and easy to use. Okay, we had uh, three methods. One is filter salts. Another one is the uh, schema. And the last one is I'm using my refugium. Okay, this is my refugium. I grow my macroalgae in it. What happens is that it's gonna absorb uh, using uh, my available nutrients at the end of three and at pa four. So, as a base of plants, it's gonna absorb all these nutrients and grow. What I do is that twice a week, I take it off some of the algae and check it off in my trash. So, in this way, I export it out of the Deep tank so I can keep my level of nutrients on level so all these algae is growing here I have a ketomorpha, a great clofa, clofa and a lot of other types of uh, algae is growing here and you can follow up on my last episode I'm talking about my refugium <laughs> is this filter sauce that removes most of the organics out of the water column which are uh, chunky fish foods, fish waste and anything before it gets the chance to decompose so the uh, majority, majority of the waste is being uh, collected this year so it doesn't have a chance to decompose there and then the second one is the schema okay, the schema does another job which uh, removing already decomposed organics and fat in the salt water by removing it using the bubble mixed with the air mixed with the water ratio and it creates a bubble so it collects on top of this uh, 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 schema cup and then I remove it manually uh, twice a week the third one is uh, by uh, using a refugium, I removed already decomposed uh, organics and nutrients in the water by uh, using the macroalgae in the refugium. In this way, the three stages uh, effectively being removed and uh, being consumed by the plants and being removed by the schema and even the filter salts. In this way, my parameters of the nutrients stay stable. That was three best methods of a reef, uh, reef tank uh, nutrient export, which is a uh, start with uh, filter sauce, which is I'm uh, removing uh, all the free floating uh, detritus out of the water, so it doesn't have a chance to decompose inside there. And then the second method is by skimming out of the water column, so it's going up as well. The third one already diluted uh, nutrients being consumed by my refugium of algae so in these three ways I got my levels of uh, nutrients stable okay thing is that you need to keep your uh, reef parameters as stable as possible so it doesn't fluctuate the more it fluctuates the more you're gonna have trouble uh, figuring out what is going on so please do a uh, water test often every week once don't be lazy on it and please 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 do your water change every week once if you're gonna be lazy on it you're gonna have some trouble figuring out something gonna go, go wrong okay this is based on my experience so I do weekly water change of 10% at least okay in this way I keep my parameters as stable as possible as close as possible and fluctuations are not that much do a chart on a paper and uh, and jot it down so you can see what's wrong and it's going wrong by testing your reef parameters okay guys that's all for this episode for the next episode we'll let you know in the end of the 
uh, video and uh, please comment if you got a much more better nutrient export methods and uh, till then uh, please like the video and please share the video don't forget to subscribe guys and uh, please take care as well for the next video See you next time.